Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, and I was just, um, as for most of you who know, actually if it's the first time you're visiting this site, um, you might want to subscribe if you think my topics are interesting, um, and thank all my subscribers and those people who like my videos and those who share them. Um, you may remember I did a video a few months ago about those students who had been allegedly um, caught cheating. It started off with the Panorama programme in 2014, which said there was organised um, method of cheating in the English tests. And as a result, they went mad at the Home Office and decided that they were going to deport thousands of students. Um, all accused of cheating. They didn't give a lot of them evidence, but they they didn't provide evidence to a lot of people. A lot of people didn't know why they were being deported. There was no communication. Anyway, uh, I'm, I've got a, a, an article from The Guardian. I'm going to extract bits so it's not too long, about a gentleman who was um, also convicted of cheating in that test. And it's only because his family was able to raise £23,000 why we hear his voice. A lot of uh, other people have been deported because they cannot have the legal fees. And so they've been forced to leave the country. When I say they don't have the legal fees, they couldn't raise the legal fees to defend themselves. And that's a sad thing in this country or in any country. If you don't have the money, you can't defend yourself and you're presumed guilty. And what is sad about that is that when you're deported um, for cheating, it means you can't go into this country or any other country. It affects your whole livelihood. You don't have any future anywhere. You can't get a job. You can't do anything. It affects your entire um, entire life because you are then deemed a criminal. And it's through no fault of your own. Anyway, I'm going to read his story. Um, so sit back. It's time to go and get a cup of tea or something. And yeah, I'm not going to take too long. OK, um, during the, and this is from The Guardian. Um, during the four months he was held in detention, accused by the government of cheating in a Home Office approved test, English test, Raja Noman Hussein witnessed firsthand the scale of the government's student scandal. He estimates he met more than a hundred other international students who had also been arrested and detained after being accused by the Home Office of cheating in the test of English for international communication. That's pronounced TOEIC. That's what I'll be calling it in future. That's the test of English for international communication and they abbreviate it as TOEIC. All denied the accusation, but the vast majority of them were subsequently removed from the UK. This is what he says, it's in quotes. Every day I met three or four new people who were detained because of TOEIC. Some people were doing masters, some were doing PhDs, he said. Every second person I met was there for the same reason. You asked, why are you here? They said, because of the English language test. I've never met anyone who cheated. They were all well educated with good English. The thing is, is that what they're arguing with this English test, you know, and the people doing the PhD, is that what they're saying is they got a proxy to sit the test for them. And so these people managed to get on these PhD tests, um, PhD courses, but they didn't have the English language proficiency because somebody else took it. But I'm sure um, that the course people would know or, you know, mind you, everything's done electronically these days. They could get somebody else to do it. But anyway, I'm not um, I'm not refuting anything that's been done. I'm not saying that they didn't cheat. I'm not saying that they did. I'm just saying that sometimes things are not the way they seem. In this case, they did a blanket deportation and revoked 34,000 visas. And I don't see how you can do that when it's only a small percentage who cheated. And as usual, everyone pays for a couple of people's mistakes. But it's not even that. Well, if it's revoked, it's not so bad because I would assume they didn't even come here in the first place. But for those who were already here, 
that's not good because it means that once your visa has been revoked, you are then homeless. Well, you are then illegal. You are then homeless. You don't have no access to nothing. Anyway, let me continue with the story, lest I rant on. Hussein 28 is about is one of about 34,000 students whose visas were revoked or curtailed after the Home Office accused them in 2014 of cheating in one of the government-approved English proficiency tests which international students are required to take when renewing their visas. Now you might ask, why is she talking about something that happened in 2014? Because even though that happened in 2014, you know, things just get leaked out. We don't always hear of it when it happens. Sometimes it takes years for, like him, it's taken him three years to get this far and a lot of money. That's why we hear it. So yes, it might sound as though it happened a long time and it's no longer relevant, but it's because these voices are now coming out and letting us know how they've been treated and what's happened. And I love The Guardian because The Guardian is on top of things like this. Um, students are still being detained and forcibly removed. Hussein was held for a second time in February. He argues he had no need to cheat since he came to the UK with a good level of English, having studied in an English medium school since the age of 11. He has spent five years, I said three years, he has spent five years trying to clear his name so he can either resume his studies or return home to Pakistan without an allegation of fraud from the UK government hanging over him. I mean, a lot of people, they have to do this to save their face. I mean, being accused of something is one thing, but when it affects your whole life, that's another. He, can you imagine him going back to Pakistan and trying to get a job? And they said, oh, what was your last job? Oh, well, I was a student and I was actually deported because I was accused of fraud. You know, a lot of times these, these employers or these um, head principals of schools, they don't want to investigate. They don't try to ascertain whether or not it's true or false. As far as they're concerned, if you're deported, you must be guilty. And so these people don't have a chance in hell. Their lives are absolutely ruined. Um, the National Audit Office last week, well, we won't say last week. I hate time frames because depending on when it's published and when you watch it, it's not last week. So I'll just say the National Audit Office announced an investigation into the government's actions, expected the report. But the Home Office continues to stand by its decision to cancel or curtail the visas of tens of thousands of students. The Immigration Minister, Caroline Noakes, said, said that the Home Secretary, Savid Javid, he's another one, would make a statement once he had reviewed the um, National Audit Office report. I don't know what planet Savid Javid is on either. The consequences of the accusation have been life-shattering for Hussein. Hussein has never been in trouble with the police. For a while he shared a cell in Brook House Immigration Removal Centre with a murderer. I've never killed a rat in my life, he says, and I'm being kept in a place with people who have killed. He has been supported by relatives who've paid more than £23,000 in legal costs. Students he encountered from poorer families were unable to mount the legal challenges. Unable to mount legal challenges to the decision and most were removed. I mean, that's what I mean. If you ain't got the money, or if you haven't got the money, it's proper English. If you haven't got the money, you're screwed. And, you know, a lot of time, this is what the government depends on. When they put people in these detention centres and, you know, pending deportation, they bank on people not being able to afford to get them out, not being able to afford the legal fees. I tell you something, if I was a millionaire, that is one thing I would put in place. Free legal representation for detainees. Because it's so unfair that none of them have a voice or none of them have an access to a voice. I think it's absolutely diabolical. They're meant to have a process of appeal, but it costs money. And you're not dealing with people who have got money. Ah, oh, 
It's such an unfair system. And it's deliberately unfair. We know that, don't we? Okay. Um, where was I? Okay. He came... He... Where am I? He became homeless for a while after his release, forced to sleep in his car because as someone classified as living here illegally, he lost the right to, to rent a property. It's a shame that he was forced to um, sleep in a car, especially when his relatives had paid 23000 But the thing is, I mean, people can only do too much. And then if he's illegal, these parents and family members they don't want to be associated with them because they can be accused of harboring an illegal immigrant so they can't take that risk otherwise all of them will be subject to deportation or some kind of criminal charge so you might say to a lot of people oh why couldn't they put him up that's the reason why it's like accessory to a crime if you put up somebody who's illegal most of, the, most of the students he met in detention told him the Home Office had not provided any evidence explaining why they had been accused. Hussein remains traumatised by the memory of being woken at 5.45am on the 30th of June 2014. Oh, that's why it took five years. And that's why it's only just coming out. Um, about 15 immigration officers. Talk about overkill raided his house and swarmed his bedroom well you know that there's you know as soon as they know it's an asian name terrorist terrorist that goes into their head paranoid not student you know not international student it's a stereotype um when he showed them his driving license one of the office spoke into a walkie-talkie on his shoulder announcing target achieved Five immigration enforcement vans were parked in the street outside his home. Five for one person. Or were they hoping to get a lot of people in there? The Home Office had not informed him he was accused of cheating or that his student visa was being revoked. So he had no idea why he was being arrested. Guardian today is absolutely brilliant. You should really subscribe to that newspaper. They're always asking for donations, you know, because they're honest and they're open. Otherwise, we wouldn't hear half of this stuff. We would hear it, but in a diluted or a reframed way. Hussein kept on asking. I kept asking, what have I done? Have I done something wrong? He was told to gather some clothes, handcuffed and taken to detention, where officials showed him a ticket for a flight on which he was booked to return to Pakistan. He was only able to avoid being removed on this and a second flight booked later in his detention because he was able to find £4,500 to pay a solicitor. It's a sin. It's a sin that the most vulnerable have to pay that kind of money to, to you know, to um, prove their innocence. It's a sin. When he was released, he was forced to stop studying three months before graduating, wasting three years of working and 16,000 intuition fees. And that's the thing, that's what I was telling you. You know when these students and all these visas get revoked, they've already paid up front. And they don't get the money refunded. That's what I'm saying. It's fine if you want to revoke or deny, but give people back the money they've paid. 16,000 pounds he lost. And for somebody who's got 16,000 pounds, and has been in this country for 11,000 since he was 11. Can that English proficiency test really apply to him? Can't they do the maths? I haven't heard him speak. I don't know. You know, there was no video with it. So, that I'm aware of. Um, the student problem began with the broadcast of the Panorama documentary in 2014, which I mentioned earlier, revealing evidence of organised cheating in two of TOEIC's test centres, prompting Theresa May, ooh, ooh, 
the then Home Secretary to take action. The Home Office asked the US-based company Educational Testing Service, which ran the test to analyse voice record recordings to see whether students had cheated. That's a thing. One thing with white UKians, they do not like to feel as though they have been exploited or cheated by foreigners. Even though they do it, they don't like it done back. They don't like to think that somebody has got, a foreigner has got away with anything. And so they penalise all of them. And that is unfair. That is unfair. Because we don't penalise everybody just because we've been screwed over. Oh, anyway. Lest I get too passionate again. Um, oh, I didn't finish that sentence, did I? The company told the Home Office that 34,000 had definitely cheated and another 22,000 had possibly committed fraud. They concluded only 2,000 students who took the test between 2011 and 2014 did not cheat. They later found that that machine was faulty that diagnose those statistics. But do they say sorry? Oh no. More than 1,000 students have been removed from the UK as a result of the accusation, but hundreds of students have protested their innocence. More than 300 cases are pending appeal court decisions. So you see those 300 cases out of 34,000 are probably people who have a little dosh and can afford representation. The rest, they're at the mercy of the government and of misjustice. What can I say? That's it for now, folks.